Hello everyone, my name is Chloe Savignac. I'm a second year master's student at McGill University Integrated Program in Neuroscience, supervised by Professor Danny Rosta, affiliated with the Quebec AI Institute. And today we'll present the results from my investigation of the hippocampus diffuse network subregion covariation in relation to Alzheimer's disease risk. We worked with the UK Biobank, which is a large-scale data collection initiative that offers in-depth information on around half a million participants recruited from across Great Britain. This rich epidemiological cohort comprises a wide variety of resources, including cognitive and physical assessments, demographic and health records, as well as genetic and brain imaging data, which were of primary interest in our analysis of Alzheimer's disease risk. We were especially interested in looking at the APOE gene, which by itself is thought to account for up to 20% of late onset Alzheimer's disease irritability. We observed six different APOE gene variants in our population cohort that were determined based on two single nucleotide polymorphism. Working at the population level made it possible for us to investigate the effect of less prevalent genotypes such as E2 and E4 mozygotes. E2 mozygotes are associated with increased risk of developing dementia but have a prevalence of less than 1% in the general population. In contrast, E4 mozygotes are associated with increased risk of developing dementia and have a prevalence of around 2%. The rarity of both of these genotypes means that they are seldom investigated in traditional small to medium-sized imaging samples. In fact, just the number of E2 mozygotes in our population cohort is larger than most existing clinical data sets for Alzheimer's disease. We also benefited from expert-curated image-derived phenotypes of green matter morphology that were extracted from T1-weighted MRI and available from around 40,000 UK Biobank participants. We especially looked at gray matter volumes within the neocortical region of the default network, which we know overlap with metabolic, structural, and amyloid perturbation in individuals with dementia of the Alzheimer's type, as well as in healthy individuals at genetic risk for the disease. We also benefited from the advent of ultra-high resolution atlases and advanced subsegmentation technique of the hippocampus to quantify the level of risk of a given patient based on specific granular information. We looked at 38 distinct subregions within the human hippocampus that were extracted with the automatic free surface subsegmentation that draws on a probabilistic atlas with ultra-high resolution. At the heart of our analysis workflow, we derived dominant regime of structural correspondence that provide insight into how structural variation amongst the finely segregated hippocampus can track structural variation amongst the finely segregated default network. We employ canonical correlation analysis, a doubly multivariate statistical technique, to identify the sources of common population variation between the full set of 38 hippocampus subregions and that of any one default network subregions. This algorithmic approach finds principal signature of structural covariation, or modes, between two sets of variables. By construction, these population signatures are ranked by importance. Each mode does represent a different point signature that account for increasingly less shared variance between the allocortical and neocortical atlases at subregion resolution. We decided to keep the first 25 modes of hippocampus default network variation for further analysis. So once we extract these population signature, we can look at how each mode is differently expressed in relation to Alzheimer's disease risk. To do so, we perform a rigorous group difference analysis to single out microstructural divergence in specific anatomical subregions with respect to Alzheimer's disease risk. For each of the derived modes of hippocampus default network covariation, we aim to isolate anatomical subregions that show statistically defensible deviation in individual with and without family history of Alzheimer's disease. We use a resampling procedure to obtain a non-parametric estimate of how Alzheimer's disease risk is manifested in specific subregion for each of the 25 group campus and default network covariation signature. The proportion of Alzheimer's disease proxy cases in our samples was 25%. These proxy cases were determined based on self-reported maternal or paternal history of Alzheimer's disease and related dementia, what we call ADRD. We can next zoom in on how hippocampus and default network divergence are distributed in each of the 25 modes of hippocampus default network covariation. I will show the divergence we identify on mode 1, which as I said is by construction the mode that captured the most variance between the hippocampus and default network subregions. So on mode 1 for the default network side, we observed a lot of hits to midline structure. So posterior midline structure as the precuneus, which was pineal cortex and posterior cingulate cortex, as well as in uh, frontal midline structure, such as the dorsal medial prefrontal cortex. We also see some more uh, lateral hits to the ventral lateral prefrontal cortex, inferior parietal lobule, and superior temporal gyrus. On the hippocampus side, we see that the strongest weights are related to the CA1, C23, and molecular layer. The molecular layer is where the axon of the CA fields are located. We next perform a phenomine profiling to see how individual expression of mode 1 was related to 1,000 UK biobank traits uh, across 11 lifestyle categories. So I'm showing the result of these analysis that were conducted in males and females separately. 
So here on these Miami plots, each dot represents a single person correlation coefficient. And on the y-axis, uh, we show the negative logarithm of the p-value. So the higher the dot, the more robust is the correlation. So in males, we observe a lot of hits related to environmental uh, quality, such as NO2 air pollution and quality of uh, green space and natural environment in the vicinity. We also observe some hits related to verbal numerical reasoning. In females, we show some cognitive hits as well, but not to the same extent as in male. We rather observe some hits related to cardiovascular processing. Next, we look at how individual expression of each of the 25 modes of hippocampus devote network for variation interacted with the APOE genotypes in estimating Alzheimer's disease risk. We regressed family history of Alzheimer's disease, which is a binary outcome, yes, no, on a set of 14 regression parameters in males and females separately. So we looked at the main effect of each of the six APOE genotypes, the main effect of a given hippocampus or default network patterns for each of the 25 modes, and six interaction terms uh, for the interaction of each of the six APOE genotypes and the given hippocampus or default network pattern being investigated, controlling for age. So each column on these heat maps represent a single logistic regression model, and we show the models in males at the top and for females at the bottom. The first 25 columns shows the model for the hippocampus, side and the second set of 25 columns show the model for the default network side. So we can observe a gradient effect in the opposing effect of E2 and E4 that is female specific. So in females, we see that E4, E4 is associated with more risk than E3, E4, which is in turn associated with more risk than E2, E4. So it seems as if E2 can still be protective against Alzheimer's disease in the presence of an E4 allele because we observe these differences in coefficient that are not found uh, in males. Then if we look, uh, we see in females that there is a main protective effect of E2E2 on Alzheimer's disease risk that is not uh, observed in male, even in our sample of 20,000 uh, UK Biobank participants. Lastly, the main takeaway from these plots are these patterns of interaction between the canonical variates and APOE genotypes. So if we zoom in for female, yes, we have shown that E2E2 is mainly protective against Alzheimer's disease risk, unless you have a brain structure that is highly expressive of mode 9 on the default network side, in which case you are twice twice as much likely to have family history of Alzheimer's disease. So we have replicated known results, such as this dosage effect in E2 and E4, that is sex-specific, but we have also shown that the protectiveness of these genotypes is modulated by hippocampus default network covariation expression. We have conducted similar analysis, but this time, instead of regressing family history of Alzheimer's disease, we looked at a different set of modifiable uh, risk factor for Alzheimer's. So we observed similar patterns of interaction that were uh, preferential to E2 homozygotes in, uh, with the canonic, several of the canonical variates. So in males, we see this interaction with E2E2 for doing unpaid or voluntary work, which is a measure of social engagement. In females, we also see interaction with E2E2, but this time with the canonical variates for engaging in strenuous sports, which is a measure of our, a modifiable cardiovascular risk factor. So it seems as if social engagement is particularly important to male in modifying the protectiveness of E2, while um, engaging in sport is particularly important to females. So across signature of hippocampus default network covariation, we have shown the relevance of the CA1, C23 molecular layer, and their neocortical protection targets in differentiating between participants with and without family history of Alzheimer's disease. Our results are in line with the preferential vulnerability of CA1 revealed by a post-mortem examination of Alzheimer's disease patient. Our population neuroscience approach has also directly compared the putatively protective and deleterious consequences associated with E2 and E4 respectively. In particular, we have highlighted sex specificity in the productiveness of E2 that was mediated by hippocampus and default network covariation expression. We have shown that uh, engaging in physical activity was particularly beneficial to females, while uh, social engagement was particularly beneficial to males. So in females, uh, following menopause, we know that there are higher risk of neurovascular complication, and E2, despite being associated with the re reduced risk of cognitive decline, is also linked to more neurovascular complication. So possibly engaging in strenuous sport could be particularly beneficial to older females E2 uh, homozygotes in counteracting the rising risk of neurovascular complication resulting from both a decrease in estrogen and being E2 homozygotes. In contrast, social engagement has uh, been shown to be associated to decrease in Alzheimer's disease risk, and this could be male-specific because we know as a, a couple ages, often the female is responsible for maintaining the social circle. So possibly engaging in a social activity could be particularly beneficial to male in reinstating a social circle that could have been lost due to unemployment and or retirement. 
So we know that friendship and social interaction are one of the most complex things that the human mind does. Yet social isolation has only recently emerged as an important risk factor for Alzheimer's disease due to some work from our lab. While health policy have attempted to delay cognitive decline in vulnerable individuals, are finding rather spotlight modifiable risk factors that we have linked to the protectiveness conferred by E2. We found especially strong ties between E2 homozygotes and risk factors that could be exacerbated in the ongoing COVID-19 crisis, such as lacking physical activity and chronic social isolation. The unprecedented scale and depth of our investigation into the E2 allele could open the window to a new direction of efforts targeted at maximizing under-research E2-mediated protective risk factors. So I want to thank my mentor, Danilo, as well as all of my colleagues that have supported me in this work. Thank you.